Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today for you guys, we have a dungeon guide for the Dire Mall dungeon. So this is the Horde of the Week. So we created a Grow Mash list for this tutorial. Uh, but you guys should also watch a video, even if you're playing some uh, Cairn or Sneed as well, because there's a lot of similar strategies that are going to apply. Um, so yeah, guys, we'll jump right into it. If you love the content, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. Check it out. So the dungeon list we are running for the Dire Mall dungeon is a Grow Mash list. We have in the list Grow Mash. We have Stone Hoof Torrent. We have Execute the Harpies. We have the Dark Spirit Troll, the Quill Boar, and the Frost Wolf Shaman. So obviously we are creating a deck around the Bloodlust ability from Gromash. We are playing Gromash with Mirror Image and uh, we are going to play a lot of other units that take advantage of all of that so quickly. Um, the Dark Spirit Troll is really good in this list uh, with Big Bad Voodoo for the second boss or because the second boss spawns some uh, explosive bombs and those explosive bombs are not going to one shot dark spiritual if you have your dark spiritual high level enough and so the dark spiritual is going to regenerate back his health and it completely nullifies those uh little bomb or eye bombs from the second uh boss so very very important uh, that talent here um for the other talent it doesn't matter that much why we have execute in the list for the for two reasons execute is really good for one the first level uh minis start attacking each other uh once they go below 50 percent health i believe so execute is really good if your opponent is doing a big push you just execute and then they're going to switch side um, so actually very good against the first boss and the last boss so the last boss there's a healer and what i do on the last boss is I cycle execute to kill the healer before the healer can heal himself back up. So the healer is going to heal the uh, main boss and the uh, while he heals the main boss, you're going to cycle back to another execute and kill him. So execute very important if you want to beat this dungeon. Uh, other than that, we have Quillboard and Harpies, which are a great combo. Harpies, we use Poisonous Swipe uh, or inf Infectious Swipes, which gives poison um, because it's very good to shred some uh, armor um, ground units. So very, very good. And obviously Quillboard is the versatility from Quillboard. Uh, we play Tunnel Vision, but uh, any talent can work. And then we also have, uh, like I said, the, uh, the Frostful Shaman. Um, we play it with the Earth Shield to give extra uh, armor. We want to give armor to our Gromash, that's the main idea. And uh, we can give armor to our Stone Hoof Torrent. So this is another tank, another good damage dealer. Uh, so very good in this list. Everything goes well with the whole Bloodlust package from Gromash. So we'll jump into the dungeon, the Dire Mall dungeon. And then I'll be explaining a little bit more as we go in the dungeon. The reasoning of the the relics I pick, the reasoning of um, of where I play my unit, what is going to be my strategy. We're going to go over like that. Just had to place that back. All right, all right. Let's start this dungeon. We have the right deck. We are going to start. What is our first relic? We have. Ages of Battle, where Horde Minis near your leader have a chance to critical strike for double damage. Ooh, that could be pretty good. Dark Spirit Troll would take advantage of that. Stone Hoof Torrent would take uh, advantage of that um, very well. If the Stone Hoof Torrent crits on its charge attack, I'm not sure if that works, but that would be dope. Gauntlet of Determination. Your leader gain plus one level each time they are deployed. Not too great. Um, Howling Warband. On death, your mini grant bloodlust to nearby allies. I think we're going to go for Ages of Battle here. So we get a chance to critical. What is that chance? <laughs> I wish they gave the uh, percentage. Um, yeah, it just feels really good. Uh, so we're against Stomper Krieg as the first level. So yes, for Stomper Creed, what we want to do is uh, obviously push the towers one by one, but when our opponent creates a good push, a great push, that's when we execute to switch those minis side. Um, yeah, they're gonna switch side, they're gonna attack each other. So if we have any issue with uh, some stuff, we just execute. And uh, in the meanwhile, we are gonna, is there another chest on the map? Okay, we can send our miner here 
And then we are going to play our Grow Mash here with the mirror images. And then we are going to play our Stone Hoop Torrent for this uh, Mountaineer here. We are going to play our Quill Bore. Hopefully, we can tank a little bit. And here, can we. Look, we are going to execute, and they are all going to attack each other, which is absolutely insane. <laughs> And we have uh, almost killed the Ogre Magi. We need to send something to help take back the turret. We are going to send our Miter here. We have the mirror images. Put in some work. And then here we are going to play our Stonehoof Torrent to get that chest. So there goes. Uh, we are going to play our Harpies. With our quill board behind it. Okay, so the Ogre Magi did not kill our Harpies, which is very good. Is the quill board. Wait, if we play Execute here, the Ogre Magi is not gonna attack the quill board, and we are gonna get a chest, so that's basically a free. Uh, almost a free execute, just like that. If we cycle back. To our execute, we might have something going on here. We didn't like that miner; he wasn't our friend. We are gonna play our quill bore. Okay, we can execute here to once again help our ghoul, uh, help uh, our stone hoof torn with the ghoul. We can play the grow mash, so we bloodlust the dark spirit troll. And now it's it might do oh yeah it does double down. Do you guys see that? The um, Dark Patrol did double damage like twice, I think. I think. So does execute uh, work on boss? Um, execute is not gonna work on boss like you might think. It works. Um, I think it has a maximum of, uh, amount of damage it can do, but it's still really good to cycle execute on bosses. For our next relic, we are going to go for, we have Captain Helm, uh, where our tanks gain deploy, uh, well, gain taunt on deploy. All right? Taunt gain, gain a taunt ability. Is that on deploy or is that, I'm not sure. And then we have Oxford's Contract. Each gold you mine partially heals your tower and base. So that, I don't, th I don't think we care about that, especially for the other two levels we usually lose with time and not with um not with our base being destroyed deploying an unbound mini deals damage to nearby enemies uh, okay we are going to go with captain helms captain's helm just because it hits uh, more of our unit and it buffs our tanks we have uh, quite a bit of tanks and then we are going to start the next level here All right. So we know that there is going to be some Eye of the Void that are going to spawn in this level every time you play a unit. And that Eye of the Vo uh, Void is going to move and explode upon contact. Um, so that's why we have the other units in the list, like the Darks Patrol, that helps a lot. And uh, yeah, so in this list, you don't want to play too much swarm units or in this uh, level what you want to do is to play big chunky units so that there won't be too much eye of the void that spawns um but the uh on the shorter on the uh, lower expensive cost units we have the uh, dark patrol which is very good against this uh, eye of the void spawning ability so yeah and then we have uh Imol thar that um does some AOE damage in a co in a uh, in a cone, I think, in a cone in front of him. I'm, I, I want to say, and uh, it's elemental damage. So uh, yeah, he doesn't do that much damage. Once we push that left side, uh, we are in a great position. 
what I do here normally is I just ignore completely the right side and I push only the left side with that one gold mine and then we uh, start spawning stuff from the uh, meeting stone. That's the way I usually uh, do it. So uh, yeah, without further ado, we are gonna start it. This one is a little bit more of a challenge because we don't have execute to uh, help us much the quill bore. So they, there is a lot of ogre mage uh, or magi in this uh, dungeon. So the uh, quill bore is actually very good because of the resistant trait of the quill bore. Now we just need to secure. Okay. I'm fine with the uh, shaman being uh, haunted. So we are playing our Gromash and we are playing our Stone of Torn because it's going to charge forward. Hopefully our Dark Spirit Troll can do some work. We don't even take a single damage here. As we move forward, we have our Miner that is going to get some gold. So we are going to play the Quill Boar behind. And we are going to cycle some Execute. We still do so much damage with the Execute. All right. So we are going to take the win here fairly, fairly easily. All right. Next up for our third and last relic to help us beat this dungeon we have necrology robes that summons three skeletons wherever whenever you play a spell so we only have execute but three skeleton is good especially the, because we are going to play it on the enemy boss we have primal air your elemental minis shock their attackers uh, damaging them shock they okay so a little bit more damage from shock but only for the shaman and then frost inscription your barracks and towers apply frost on hit so we don't want to play that one because it's fairly rare that we have enemies in our towers um so i think necrology robes is a little bit better in this level so let's go let's uh fight king gordok let's see if we can clutch this dungeon run Let's see if we can clutch it. All right, so at the start of the dungeon, there's two wars on grunts, so we have to deal with them first. There's the Defiance Bandit here and here. So guys, at this level, all right, we have Gordok here, King Gordok, that has greater fury, so he uh, he's going to attack so, so quickly that it's really, really hard to defeat. He's going to shred all of your army. Um, the the only th way you can slow him is if you make him move, but uh, in this list it's uh, very hard to do. And plus, it's even harder because he has Chill Rush, the Observer behind, which heals nearby allies and deals magic damage at range. And uh, that healing ability is the biggest issue because it's going to heal back King Gordok, which is the boss we want to kill. Uh, but we have this secret uh, trick of cycling some execute on the um on the show rush to kill him um and then the main boss gordok won't have any healing and he will be fairly easy to beat especially if you uh, defeat the other two i think it's lieutenants so the other two lieutenants on each side of the map they both will help us defeat the main boss king gordok we have a chrome crush here on one side um, so what he cleaves target and he does the mortal strike debuff um, and then adding a mortal strike debuff that has show rush healing on the, t the target so that means there's going to be less healing so if we have some issues with the healing from the uh, healer on the other side uh, then we can use a crom crush to help us uh, but when he dies he switch uh, alle uh, allegiance right uh, but What's more important, I think, for us, because we have a way to kill the healer with our uh, execute cycle, 
is uh, Leith Tendris, which casts Curse of Exhaustion, greatly lowering attack and movement speed of target. So this is how we are uh, slowing down the main boss. If we have Leith Tendris, the main boss is not going to be able to, or King Gordok is not going to be able to shred our army very easily. So yeah. I think she's a little bit more important to get. And plus, guys, it's important to note there's two different gold mines on both sides of the map. So even if you do uh, get Chrome Crush, you are still going to be rewarded with some gold mines. So first of all, we're going to start. We're going to fight against the uh, Warsong Grunts quickly. We like to push middle because it's a big source of pressure, but we are not going to overcommit. Okay, so we are going to push mid without overcommitting. And then we are going to push left and right with some uh, as small push as possible. And uh, once we do get uh, everything, well, then we are going to create, once we have enough gold, enough control, then we'll create our execute cycle on uh, the Cho Rush, the observer, the healer. And uh, we are just going to do the dungeon like that. So guys, we will jump right into it. We are going to play our Gromash here. And we are going to play our Frostful Shaman to heal our Gromash. So there it is. So I think just like that, we have enough uh, pressure here on the middle. So we are sending our Harpies and we are gonna play our Quillbore to tank for the Harpies. And this should be enough to take this boss. And here we can play our Execute to uh, finish the turret. And uh, yeah, we already have a great push. We This gives us this gold mine. So uh, yeah, we are already in a great position. We already have a push here, but it doesn't matter because it's all going to get healed. Uh, however, there's Chrom Crush here. I think we are just going to ignore that. Uh, and we are going to push a little bit to the right because we need that anti-heal a little bit more. And we are even going to play our Gromash. And now, if we get our other Miner. Yeah, we do have our other Miner soon. Okay, so Chrom Crush attacks uh, the middle, which is great because we can play the Harpies behind. And now, now we are going to cycle our executes because we have that gold mine that is arriving. You guys ready? Are y'all ready? We're going to wait for Chrom Crush to push. Let's go Chrom Crush. There it is. That's one execute. We're going to play a Quill Bore. We're going to play some more stuff. We want to spend all our gold. We are going to play another miner here. And now we have our execute once again. Boom. So now there's no more healing. And plus we have all of the lieutenants also attacking uh, King Gordok. So we are just like that going to take the win here. So guys, I hope this was helpful. I'll keep pushing um, with this exact strategy, but this is the best way of completing this dungeon. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And uh, I tell me if you guys enjoy this type of a dungeon breakdown. Should I do it? Uh, should I do one with every single uh, faction uh, or one with every single leader for every week? Um, tell me in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching once again. I'll see you guys in the next one.